As a licensed therapist, you often hear me talk about mental health and trauma on my channel and on my show. Well, today is no different because we are going to talk about a trauma that we don't talk about enough, and that is financial trauma. You may or may not have heard of it before, but that's why we're having this conversation with one of my faves, Dr. Constance Craig Mason. When I think about financial anything, I think about her. Not only is she the CEO of Concierge Financial Advisory, but she is also a financial planner, a national social security advisor, an investment advisor, an insurance broker. She is also a best-selling author, a public speaker, and she has over 15 plus years in the game and has been featured on Yahoo, PBS, and even Black Enterprise. So please join me in welcoming to the Keandra Jackson Show, Dr. Constance Craig Mason. <laughs> Dr. Constance, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. Thank you for saying yes and being here. Absolutely. Why would I say no? You're amazing. <laughs> Listen, there's some people that told me no, believe it or not. So I am just glad that you decided to come on the show. When I think about financial trauma, well, actually, when I think about anything in the financial space, you are the person that comes to my mind. First person that comes to my mind for sure. Thank you. I worked hard for that. I did. Absolutely. We already ran your credit. So they know that you are no joke. <laughs> you are not a newbie to this game, but I know that you're going to provide some valuable information to our audience because there's so many people who've never heard of financial trauma. You know, this is a well, part of my channel is mental health, so I talk a lot about that, and we talk a lot about trauma in general, but this is going to be the first time that people have heard of financial trauma, so tell us a little bit, just from your perspective, in kind of like simple terms, what is financial trauma? It literally is a financial wounding. It is experiences that we consider to be negative that oftentimes start when we're children. Things that we don't even have any control of yet, but that we are witness to or that we are experiencing, such as childhood traumas, you know, divorce, even our parents losing their income, things of that. And so it is traumatizing to experience not being able to have something that you need, let alone what you want, having expectations of being cared for and it not being met. And oftentimes when it starts in our childhood, you know, we start to see this as a normal thing. And I can tell you, even when myself, I grew up in the inner city of Baltimore in poverty to a single mom. And I love my mom. She definitely taught us how to budget or pinch a penny, but it did uh, have me in a less than mindset. It had me thinking that I could not reach for the stars. It had me thinking that there was not going to be more than enough. And when you grow up like that, you you have lowered expectations for what it is that you can accomplish in life, not just financially, but even in your career. And so a lot of people struggle with, with money, but they don't see it as a traumatic experience until someone like us comes along and says, hey, there's a link between childhood traumas and even in your adulthood, you know, sudden losses of income, such as what happened during the pandemic. You know, people felt some kind of way about not being able to go to work like they used to or have their businesses run in the same fashion. And so that impacted them, you know, what they were able to buy, what they were able to do or get access to. And these sometimes can be abrupt experiences. And when that happens, most people don't like change, especially when it's abrupt. But, you know, we we need to tie in our emotions to the financial experiences because it's happening whether we realize it or not. And I am a firm believer in making changes, but you can't make changes until you understand what you're dealing with. And so this conversation is key. It's so critical to people making the changes that they want post pandemic, um, but understanding that it really comes from the inside out. So yeah, I love everything that you just said. There were two things that stood out to me when you were talking. One, I can absolutely relate. Uh, I grew up in Compton, California, you know, my 
my viewers know this and we didn't have a whole bunch you know we weren't poor 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 like dirt poor but there was a shift in my family once my parents got divorced and being that my dad was the primary breadwinner that really altered the financial chemistry of our home right so the things that we used to have the excess the extra the eating out all of those things that went away you know and we were struggling eating the same thing kind of like for breakfast lunch and dinner and so now that you're talking about it and breaking it down the way that you just did, I know that I'm not the only one. I know that there are other people listening and they'll be like, dang, I didn't realize that that was trauma. I just thought we were poor or we didn't have enough. And you really just kind of like reeled that home because there's going to be a lot of things that people have to think about moving forward after hearing what you just said. You know, I know that we're in a political year right now and people are watching their retirement account. They're watching their brokerage accounts and they're seeing some kind of market decline, some fluctuation, some volatility. And that in and of itself, especially for the re, uh, pre-retirees that are within a few years of actualizing that money as a stream of income, they are experiencing some, some traumas because they are looking at their account balances dwindle due to no fault of their own. And so any type of abrupt financial concern or matter that you have, it will evoke an emotion. And whether or not we're able to have these kinds of conversations one to another, or even in our households with people we love, you know, this is how we can release some of that uncertainty, some of that stress, you know, some of those things where we're just uncertain, but to bottle it up, like any other kind of thing that we might bottle up is not beneficial to our mental health. It's not beneficial to our physical health. And even our relationships can be impacted because if we're not having the conversations about what we're seeing and what we're feeling, then it can have a negative impact that can be lasting, such as what they call chronic stress or toxic stress. What you're mentioning too reminds me of the conversation that we have a lot in the entrepreneur space around like money mindset. We often think about it's just, it's spending money or saving or budgeting, but we gotta go deeper. <laughs> Sometimes we gotta go all the way back to childhood, just like, <laughs> You know, you and I have already discussed about how it, it impacts us and how it stays with us, too. Um, but one thing that really came to mind when you were speaking was that financial trauma can happen at any phase in your life. I know you talked about the pandemic, but there are certain times where you might think you're good. And you're like, oh, yeah, we straight. And then a job loss will happen, a disability, medical issues, uh, all of the things could happen, a pandemic, you know? happens and then it just changes everything so i don't want people to think that it's just from their childhood you know but it can happen at any given time and i'll note right here that i do a lot of following of like nonprofit financial organizations that help especially with financial literacy in the community and the consumer financial protection bureau they have coined a term called financial well-being and a lot of people don't understand that as we have our physical well-being, we have our mental health well-being, we also have a financial well-being, which really means that you have the capacity to take care of your financial obligations now, as well as in the future. Also be confident in your ability to handle your affairs and then enjoy your life in the meanwhile. Not I save, 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 invest, invest, and I never get to experience any joy in the midst. So the CFPB has defined what it looks like and feels like to be financially well, but they also did a study in 2020 about how ACEs or adverse childhood experiences are directly tied to adult financial stress. <laughs> so it is something to, sometimes we don't wanna go back, right? We don't wanna go back if the experiences were not positive, but there is a link. And so if you can link that to a starting place for you, something that you know, might have been difficult growing up and you've done your absolute best to, to rid yourself of experiencing that in your own home or, you know, with your spouse or your mate and for your children. But like you said, things will happen that are outside of your control, your best efforts, like the pandemic where we saved and we had our rainy day money and then it dwindled because it took more than three to six months for the market to recover and for us to figure out what this horrible virus was. And so I just wanted to note that the CFPB is really a great resource for understanding, first of all, basic financial fundamental matters, but also that there is an emotional and a psychological, psychological link to how we're experiencing money now.
you know I'm good for a psychological link over here. Because <laughs> it just makes so much sense. For the people who are listening to you and they're like, okay, I think I might have some trauma, financial trauma, but I'm not 100% sure. I know what you're saying. Are there some ways, some signs, some things that we could readily identify in our life that can be an indicator that we are experiencing some financial trauma or we have some unresolved financial trauma that we didn't even know existed that we need to work on? I would absolutely say, and, and since you work in the mental health field, you know that oftentimes when we're unbalanced, we deal with a lot of extremes. <laughs> so we can go on either end of the spectrum as it relates to money too. So when I think of how it shows up in our everyday life, I think of people who might uh, impulsively or compulsively spend, right? Because maybe they grew up in poverty and now that they have McDonald's money, they feel like I could just go and do whatever I want and who's going to check me? Right. And so now you're impulsively or compulsively spending money just because you have it and you don't ever want someone to tell you no or that you can't have it. But on the opposite of stream, you would have somebody who's hoarding, you know, who's saving, saving, saving it. They're they're extremely frugal. You know, they have this anxiety that they will return to once they came or that they would experience some kind of future hardship. So they are save, 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 very frugal spending. And like we know with anything, you need balance, right? So whether you're, you know, having money now and you're not experiencing that kind of poverty, I think that there should still be a spending plan versus just you out here, you know, swiping all kind of cards just because if you have access to it. And then the other thing could be, you know, worrying, like excessive worrying. You're always crunching numbers. You're always trying to consider the best case scenario, the worst case scenario. You got five different ways that this could go left and what you going to do about it. Like you're just constantly in this state of what if, right? And that's not healthy. But then we have people who avoid, right? They're like, listen, I don't want to deal with this whatsoever. If you even bring up Hey, bring your statements, you know, upload your statements or review and let us know, you know, how much you have coming in or going out. They just freeze. Like they don't want to hear nothing about having to look at it. And that is one of the first stages to improving your finances is to look at it. So if you're going to look at your income versus your expenses, you want to know what that cash flow looks like. But if you're someone who has these unresolved issues, you're going to avoid that that meeting with that financial coach because you don't even want to deal with you might even feel some sense of powerlessness you know this is how it goes in my family you know genetically this is this is how we do things and so my mama struggle my daddy struggle my grandma struggle and it's it's hard for me too and so people will avoid and then you have people who are just struggling trying to manage their everyday expenses they're just hey sometimes i do it right Sometimes I don't. It's just they just don't know um, if they can get some balance to their lifestyle. So these are very extreme, but I'm telling you, there are people who live in this space. And I will even say, since you brought up entrepreneurs, we're both entrepreneurs, you know, I even see a lot of these results of the adverse childhood experiences showing up in us underpricing ourselves. You know, it shows up in us not going after opportunities that we're qualified for, but we don't see ourselves in that same light as we see other people. And the, oftentimes there is a route back to you not be feeling cared for, feeling loved on. And when you show up in your business, you could be amazing at what you do. Our good friend Quinn Conyers tells us to use luxury language. But what sense is using this luxury language if you really don't feel that within yourself, if you really don't believe that? And so it's hard for you to go out here and get these clients if you're not able to believe that you're worthy of it. And self-worth has a lot of ties to how we experience money. And we love Quinn on this show, right? Like we've, she's been an expert on our show, on my show before. Um, and she dropped gem after gem. But you said so much that resonated with my spirit. <laughs> first, first of all, I kept thinking, whoa, how much of this applies to people who are in relationships as well, right? right. Marriages, long-term relationships, even if you're dating, you know, like these are conversations that we need to be having with our partner because when you do get married and you have someone who was doing one of the five things that you mentioned and they are overspending or whatever, that's going to impact your household, you know, and 
money is a taboo topic for a lot of people, but it should not be. And also to, um, because we're people of faith over here. Um, my, my listeners already know. <laughs> but generational curses, generational patterns, generational cycles in regards to money. Like you mentioned, oh, my mama did it this way and her mama did it this way or they didn't have anything. So I'm not going to have anything. You know, right. somebody has to be that generational breaker, shifter, curse yeah. breaker in the family to say, oh, no, 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 we're not doing poverty over here. Oh, no, 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 no. The buck stops with me. So that is a mindset shift that right. that needs to happen for a lot of individuals. And that was just, that was just so beautifully put <laughs> about the people who are like, okay, Dr. Constance, you said all of that. I got the little tips, the strategies. I know what financial trauma is, but girl, help me get out of the mess that I am currently in. I done dug myself way too deep. I don't know how to get out of it. I don't want to pass this on to my kids and my kids' kids. What are some strategies or some things that you can provide that are very tangible? Because they know I like actionable steps on this channel. I want people to get off of here and be like, oh, Dr. Costa said do this. We can implement that today. <laughs> so what are some yeah. tangible things and strategies that people can implement to make sure that they're moving forward and really tackling head on this financial trauma so they can kind of pretty much just be better overall in the realm of finances? Yes. Say, you know, if you realize that listening to our conversation here, that it doesn't even have to be all of the things that we brought up. It could just be one or two things that you identify with like, oh, that is me. Oh, honey, <laughs> that is me or my husband or whomever, you know, because acceptance is a key step to making changes. So if you know that it's you, I would definitely say reach out firstly, since it's a, an emotional component as well as a capacity and learning the skill sets. So I would say reach out to maybe a financial, uh, we now have financial social workers, we have financial coaches, and of course we have our psychotherapists that we literally sit down and just talk to. We talk through our emotions, we talk through our past, you know, we let them know how we feel about our current situation, also how we grew up and what we experienced, what we watched, what we saw. And they can help us make those connections between how it's showing up in ourselves, even if it's something where we're self-sabotaging and we don't realize that we're sabotaging ourselves, but they can help us identify. So I would say definitely accept that you that you need help to reach out for a therapist or even the financial coaches or the uh, licensed financial social workers that are out there. Um, get with the financial coach as like your foundational level to understanding more about money. Right. And so there's some basic things that even myself, I did not know anything about money as it related to budgeting and navigating credit or, you know, even how to buy a home, get a bank account. Like those were things that I saw happening around me, but I didn't know how to take those steps. So a financial coach will not only provide the literacy that you need, but they'll give you like spreadsheets or if you're somebody who likes uh, apps, you know, they'll they'll reference some apps that you can use to manage money better. Um, have a realistic budget and I, a lot of people frown at the word budget, you can call it a spending plan. Cause I'd rather have a plan for where every dollar goes than feeling restricted because of a word called budget. So just make a realistic spending plan. And also if you find that you're struggling with debt, you know, some people say, I want to be debt free, you know, um, think debt can be good. It can be helpful. We can use it as leverage. So if you find that the debt that you have is overwhelming, then definitely seek to manage it better until you can ultimately pay it down to zero. But paying it down to zero shouldn't stress you out as long as you can manage it better. And then I would say continue to look for like legal help. You know, if you're having any kind of bankruptcy conversations or you need to have bankruptcy conversations or maybe the tax man is on your back right maybe the irs is getting on your nerves then maybe you need to speak with at least an accounting or bookkeeper even if you can't afford a cpa just yet but when we're talking about how do we fix this how do we get our hands wrapped around it you can't do it by yourself firstly you cannot do it by yourself so these professionals that we've referenced 
from therapists to coaches to, you know, legal professionals, all these people, there is a price point that someone will be able to help you with. You know, you don't have to Google everything because even that is stressful because Google has so many resources out there. You would never really know which one suits you best and at the time frame that you need it. And then lastly, I would say love on yourself, right? Self-care, because there will be things that you will have to accept about your past. There'll be things you'll have to accept about your current situation, things that, you know, we could do better, but we just haven't, we just haven't done better. And so I want you to be able to forgive yourself for the things that you didn't know. Forgive yourself for the family members, parents that couldn't show you the best possible ways given their circumstances and give yourself grace and patience. So, you know, I would love, love, love to just be able to love on y'all to just say, hey, if it's not the way you want it to be, that's totally fine. But accepting that you want to make some changes, that's when all the resources show up. That's when you'll start seeing things. People will start coming to you and saying, hey, I can help you with this or that. You know, you just have to accept that this is not where you're ultimately going to be. Are you sure you didn't want to be a therapist? In your pre I feel like I am sometimes. I really, really do. Like I'm like I have some peers uh that are like licensed financial social workers and people like that, but I relate so well to them because I feel like my own personal story allows me to relate better to people that it's not just about the spreadsheets, it's not just about the account values. It really is about who you are as you're trying to develop the life that you want to live. And so I'm super passionate about anybody who wants better and is willing to do the work and in the midst of that work giving yourself grace when you miss it i love that last piece that's the grace part right loving on yourself i don't think we talk about that enough especially when we have beat ourselves up for so long about mistakes or you know things that we have done in the past like just learning from those things and trying to move forward and saying, you know what? I forgive me. I forget my mama. I forget my grandma. I forget okay. all of them who didn't know. They just tried to do the best that they could and survive. Right. But now I have this responsibility for myself and the future generations to do something different. So that was really, really powerful. I know for a fact <laughs> that everybody listening learn a thing or two from you. And y'all know I only bring on people here who have been handpicked from my network. And Dr. Constance has personally helped me, okay? I got my life insurance from her. My sister, when she was having all her medical stuff going on, she got her and her kids together. Like we sat down and it was the perfect time. And this is how I knew it was God because I sat down to help Constance. Dr. Constance sat down and helped me with my stuff. And I said, let me check to see if my mom and my sister and them got their stuff together. And exactly. it was probably like six months prior to my sister getting diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you got to have things in place on a certain amount of time before insurances and things can kick in. And so I'm just so personally grateful for Dr. Constance and what she does because she's helped me and my family in a very, very deep way in a very hard time. So... Dr. Constance, let people know about your services, where they can work with you. People are going to be like, hold on, who is this girl? I need to connect with her. I need to link up with her. She needs to help me. So how can people stay connected with you? Do you have any services? I already told them y'all got books. You got all the stuff. So let them know how they can stay connected with you. Honey, I, I live on social media. My husband be like, put your phone down, ma'am. Okay, so I'm on all your favorite platforms as my name, at C. Craig Mason. I'm the CEO of Concierge Financial Advisory. So you'll be able to find me at Concierge Financial Advisory. I um, have a book out, Money Talks. It, it is a collaborative book project with 24 financial experts all across the U.S. We actually have a gentleman from Rwanda who contributed to our content as well. Um, we've sold over 1,500 books in less than a year of that project. And again, we touch on mindset right at the top of that book. The first four chapters are about mindset and money. And then we dabble into how you grow your assets, how you protect your assets, you know, how you leverage, use credit. How do you do all these things? And so 
You'll find me out there if you Google me, because it's Craig Mason. And not only that, but she had sent me before this so many amazing resources. So I'm going to make sure that I put them in the show notes with all of her links, all of the ways that you guys can get in contact with her, purchase her books, all of those things. But nobody, and I mean nobody, leaves my show without having a little fun. So are you down for a little bit of fun? I am. I'm scared, though. Ooh, child. You should be. You should be so nervous because these questions, are probably the toughest ones that I have written so far. I said, oh, these are a little hard. <laughs> and why would you give me the hard one? Because I know you can handle it, boo. I knew you can handle it. So oh. we are going to get into a game of would you rather and why? I have five questions here for you. So you just need to tell me which of these you would prefer and just give me a quick reasoning of why you chose that thing. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, question number one. Would you rather look at your mom's internet search history or your dad's internet search history? You know what's funny? This is easy because my mom is with me. My, my dad passed when I was younger. Um, so my mom, listen, that lady, she's probably not even looking up nothing, but like, you know, how to uh, how to get better with uh, cooking or something. She is probably dry but I'm gonna look into it anyway don't say a mama search history is dry okay she might surprise yeah. you it might be a little spicy in there listen if it is I'm gonna let my sister know my daughter know everybody gonna know about this spicy history now <laughs> I love that the second one is would you rather erase your own memories or erase someone else's memories of you Ooh. I told you it was going to get a little tough. That is hard. Yep. Let's see. I would say my own memories because then I can go and create some more. I like that. I, I, yeah. I, see, I see what you did there. I like this. Okay. <laughs> the third one is would you rather give up traveling or give up celebrating holidays? Give up traveling because I love celebrating holidays and people's birthdays because I like making people feel special. Oh, okay. That means you can't come to Cali then. What's <laughs> but if it's your birthday, listen, maybe you come see me and we can go eat or something. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. The fourth one is would you rather lose the ability to lie or believe every single thing that you have been told? I would say lose the ability to lie. I feel like I'm pretty good with, I, I can't stand liars. So I, I don't try to engage in that myself, but I definitely don't want to believe everything somebody say. No, we got to vet these. That'll put us in a whole bit of trouble, child. Yeah, we're not trying to do that. The last question is, would you rather <clears throat> have financial trauma or emotional trauma? Any trauma, believe it or not, because okay. emotional trauma can take so long to get over. It is daily work with healing emotional trauma. So I would say, just give me the financial trauma and, and let me get with a coach or somebody and figure it out. <laughs> That's smart. That works for me. <laughs> Love yeah. it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Cosmos, for playing a fun game of Would You Rather with me and just being a guest on my show. You already know that I'm going to have to spin the block on you and have you back for a part two. So make sure you stay ready. Thank you, my dear. I'm excited. Thank you for the opportunity. You're so welcome. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I know I say this after every guest expert that I have, but didn't she drop so many gems? I know for me, I need to rearrange and think about some additional things that I haven't thought about before or even in a while. So I hope that there was something that she said, that I said, or something that you learned on a completely different level today that you can implement in your own life. And please don't feel any type of way. If you fall into that financial trauma category, or you experienced some things and you didn't even know that it was a thing, take that information, process it, digest it and figure out a plot and a plan to switch, reverse and change and do something better moving forward. This is why we didn't just talk about what financial trauma is, but we also gave you those strategies and those actionable steps 
to help you have a better financial future. So thank you so much for watching another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. Please do not forget to like, to comment, to subscribe, because this helps me to bring you more content like this every single week. So until next time, be blessed, and I will see you later.